So generally what we do is we break these up into so-called extrinsic risk factors and then intrinsic risk factors which are inherent to the individual. Some of the extrinsic risk factors uh, that uh, are, have been linked to ACL uh, risk um, are the type of sport of course which is related to the movements that take place in the sport and if there's a lot of landing, cutting, uh, alteration, rapid uh, alteration of movement, uh, those sports would be inherently at higher risk. Uh, other factors, perhaps not with such strong scientific evidence, but uh, other factors would include perhaps the um, level of exposure, for instance during, uh, during competition, there's a higher risk than during training, which is intuitively obvious. Um, other factors would be the uh, interface between the shoe or the footwear of a particular athlete and the surface. Uh, that relates to the surface itself. Uh, the surface, of course, could be altered by weather conditions, which may also affect the risk. Um, and uh, the other extrinsic risk factors perhaps uh, need further exploration, like things like laws and uh, changes in rules and so forth in the sport. Um, what probably most the attention has been directed to date have been the so-called intrinsic risk factors, the ability to try and identify a particular at-risk athlete and in that uh, the most obvious and common and well-researched one is that females, female athletes participating in the same sports as male athletes have got a substantially higher risk of ACL rupture, particularly in the so-called non-contact situation. So that is the first and most important and probably strongest intrinsic risk factor is, is, is the female athlete. Um, other factors, intrinsic risk factors that are perhaps more of a general nature would be age, with both a very young age, um, not such a high risk, but the peak would be in the immediate post-adolescent um, stage, early adulthood, um, and those differences vary a little bit between uh, males and females. Um, of course, uh, factors such as increased body mass index uh, would also be uh, another intrinsic factor that is perhaps of a general nature. Then there are a lot of risk factors that have been identified that are specific to the, uh, the anatomy, if you like, and the alignment, particularly of the knee and the lower limb, which relate to the size and shape of the bones um, in the knee, such as the femur and the tibia, etc. Um, and those we would call the anatomical factors. Also alignment, uh, having a wider pelvis in a female and having slightly knocked knee uh, configuration to the lower limb would be another intrinsic risk factor. Um, in recent years there's been specific interest in more than what we call the dynamic uh, risk factors, that is the study of the actual activity that, is, uh, that puts an athlete as, at risk, that is the landing and cutting and changing direction and there's a term and a condition known as dynamic valgus where the knee bends in um, the foot rotates and the hip um, uh, stability is lost and we call that a very high risk intrinsic risk factor for ACL injury. For a, for a number of years we've been interested in, um, in, in finding out why specific individuals for instance um, particularly as you've mentioned uh, families, uh, siblings and so on um, have a higher risk for I guess soft tissue injuries which are the ligaments, muscles and tendons in general but then also the um, anterior cruciate. And so together with colleagues of myself in Cape Town, uh, we have conducted some research in this. This is early, early research, so-called case control studies that uh, are in athletes with uh, an ACL injury and those without. And we have found that some of the uh, athletes have got a genetic predisposition based on uh, variations in some of the genes that code for proteins, for instance, that make up uh, soft tissues such as the ligament. This is early research, it's exciting research. Um, I think it is important to, to make the point that this is very preliminary data and that uh, the future lies uh, with the next generation of younger scientists who could take up this challenge and bring uh, um, large, large studies that are required in a so-called prospective manner, uh, the data to the table so that we can evaluate this further and would fit in very nicely with a, a, a modern direction in medicine in general which is called personalized medicine um, which hopefully in the next decade or so we'll be able to starting to apply to ACL injuries as well.